Hi everybody, it's Mr. Simpson here and welcome to Mr. Simpson's Storytime, Storytime number 65. Now you may ask, and this is a really good question, where is number 64? And we realised last week that we had done two of the same number. So we had a 61A and a 61B, so we don't have a 64 unfortunately, but this is definitely the 65th story. I've got a great book for you today and it is Rumpelstiltskin carrying on with the classic theme. Here we go. I hope you really enjoy it. There was once a foolish miller whose pride and joy was his beautiful daughter, Isabel. She was sweet and gentle and adored by all. The miller was so proud of Isabel that he boasted about her day after day to anyone who would listen. Tulips start to bloom when my daughter sings, bragged the miller. When Isabel catches raindrops, they turn into butterflies. My daughter can even spin straw into gold. Soon, word reached the king, who rode to the village to hear the miller's amazing tales. Gold from straw, the king cried greedily. How clever, I command you to spin for me tonight. Wait, there's been a terrible mistake, shouted Isabel. But it was too late and she was carried off to the castle. There, in the highest tower, was a small wooden spinning wheel and a mountain of straw. Spin me my gold, ordered the king, or I shall throw you into the royal dungeons. Poor Isabel tried everything she could think of. She peddled the wheel and she twisted the straw. She pushed and she pulled, but nothing worked. And as the stars began to twinkle, Isabel started to cry. If only there was someone who could help me, she wept. Suddenly, there was a dazzling flash of light and poof, a strange little man appeared. He had a sharp pointy face and a glittering gold cape. I can spin straw into gold, the little man smoked, and I will help you for a price. I'm just the miller's daughter, whispered Isabel. I have nothing to give. Here's my plan, he said. Tonight, I will spin your gold, but one day, when you have riches beyond your dreams, I shall return. You must promise me the pick of treasure then. Yes, anything, Isabel agreed gratefully. So, the little man sat down at the wheel. Whirr, whirr. Around it spun, making coins and crowns and trinkets and trophies until the room glittered with gold. You saved me, sighed Isabel. How will I ever repay you? Just don't forget your promise, laughed the little man. And with that, he vanished. In the morning, the king returned. He was delighted. What glorious gold, he cheered. You truly are a wonderful girl. You must come and live in my castle. I'd like you to meet my son, Prince Herbert. Unlike his father, Prince Herbert was handsome and kind. He and Isabel fell in love at once. Soon, wedding bells rang out across the land. The years passed, and the happy couple were blessed with a beautiful baby boy, Prince Hugo. They were so happy, in fact, that Isabel forgot all about the funny little man. Until one stormy night, as the lightning flashed, pfft, the little man appeared again. It's me! <laughs> Pretty one, he cackled. I'm here for the treasure you promised. What? 
What treasure would you like? Isabel asked. Gold? Silver? A, a diamond necklace? No, sneered the little man. I want something even more precious. I want him. And he pointed right at Hugo. No, cried Isabel in horror. You can't take my darling baby. Uh, very well, the little man purred. Then how about a game? If you can guess my name before three nights have passed, you can keep your baby. And chuckling, the little man leapt into the air and vanished. Don't worry, my love, called Herbert, rushing over. That horrible little man will never take dear sweet Hugo. On the first night, Isabel guessed all the names she'd ever heard. Nick, Ned, Norbert, Willie, Wally, Weatherby. No, 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 uh, giggled the little man. That's not my name. The second night, Isabel and Herbert were up until dawn, thinking up new names. Is it Bumble Knuckle? Grubble Grunt? Wiggle Boo? No, 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 <laughs> cheered the little man. Not even close. Isabel was desperate. I can't think of any more names, she cried. Then we must find out this little man's secret, said Herbert. I have a plan. So the next morning, Herbert set out to search for the little man. He rode through the village, over the hills, and deep into the forest. But the little man was nowhere to be found. Then, as the sun was setting in the woods, he saw the flash of a golden cape. Herbert hid behind a tree and watched as the little man danced around a fire singing. The Queen will never win this game. Rumpelstiltskin is my name. <laughs> That's it, Herbert whispered, and he rushed back to tell Isabel. That night, the little man appeared one final time. This is your last chance, my pretty one. Let me think, said Isabel. She frowned and scratched her head. Could it be... Rumpelstiltskin? Doom and darkness! How did you guess? Shrieked Rumpelstiltskin. And he howled and he growled and he stomped and he stamped so hard that he crashed right through the floor and fell down, 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 deep into the royal dungeons below. Rumpelstiltskin was never seen in the kingdom ever again. Hugo grew up to be gentle and kind and adored by all, just like his mother. And so they all lived happily ever after the end. Thank you very much. I really hope you enjoyed Rumpelstiltskin. I will see you tomorrow for another great story. Bye!